Zhang Shiyi recalled the scene, when she saw her boyfriend with that girl. She packed up Yu Zinzo's belongings, imagining that he would come to ask for her forgiveness. However, when he actually arrived, he didn't seek her forgiveness. Instead, he directly told her, Shiyi, let's break up. He explained that, though he loved her deeply, he realized that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't have the kind of life that those born with everything already have. Therefore, he chose Kishio because she had a wealthy uncle who could help him skip 20 years of struggle. Zhang Shiyi asked him, did you bring my phone? He handed her the phone. She handed him the packed box and said, get out. Zhang Shiyi snapped a picture of her small plants and posted it on her WeChat moments, saying, today was truly a day soaked through by heavy rain. Her mom commented, advising her to drink a cup of ginger tea and take good rest. Shan Shan sent her a photo of the sunrise. Shan Shan alone at the bar. After finishing her drink and preparing to leave, the man beside her asked, What do you mean? She turned to him and replied, Just a drink, nothing more. No need for the rest of the story. With that, she gracefully turned around and left. Shan Shan came to Zhang Shiyi's house to console her. Zhang Shiyi, visibly upset, expressed how close she felt to being completely devastated upon seeing Yu Zinzo with Kishiu. Shan Shan comforted her, saying, Come on, don't be angry. I've told you before, a man like him is not worth it. He might not even be able to undergo a rebirth, and he has singed your precious feathers. It's not worth it. Zhang Shiyi declared that she would turn her sorrow into strength and work even harder. Shan Shan added, Exactly. A woman with a career is the most charming. Zhang Shiyi asked Shan Shan, You know, Yu Zinzo pursued me for a full five years. Why did he cheat on me so soon after we got together? Shan Shan replied, People, you see, once they step into society, they realize that bread is definitely more important than love. So, that's why I often say, wise people don't get entangled in love. Women must have their own careers, that's the greatest assurance. Xi'an looked up Zhang Shiyi's information online and remarked, Ah, so she's this capable. Then, with a contemplative tone, he said, surprising that no one recommended her. He continued to browse through her webpage, and in the end, he expressed a sense of reflection, saying, It's been three years too. He reminisced about the scene of her in the rain. The next day, Zhang Shiyi walked into the office with sunglasses, displaying a determined demeanor. So Yuling asked her how the interview with Xi'an went the previous night. She explained that Xi'an had some last-minute issues and rescheduled. Su commented, Xi'an always likes to change plans. She replied, it's okay, we work in the news industry, and isn't embracing change what we're supposed to do. Zhang Shiyi entered editor-in-chief Yi's office and informed her that due to some unforeseen circumstances, the interview with Xi'an didn't happen last night. However, she was in the process of rescheduling with assistant Chen and assured Yi that it wouldn't affect the submission deadline. Yi asked why she was still wearing sunglasses. She took them off and revealed that her boyfriend had cheated on her. Yi burst into laughter and said, That Yu Zinzo cheated on you? That's hilarious. He was never good enough for you in the first place, and now he cheats on you? Too funny. Zhang Shiyi and assistant Chen walked out of Lin's office building. She said, please tell manager Chen that I will make sure to let more readers understand the great vision of lean technology for the country. She and an assistant Chen walked into Lin's office building. Zhang Shiyi entered a dessert shop to pick out some treats. Yu Zinzo, accompanied by his new girlfriend, walked in. She overheard Yu asking Kishiu, when will your uncle arrange for me to work in his company? Kishiu replied, don't rush, my uncle is quite busy. When they noticed Zhang Shiyi, Kishiu walked over, lifted her lid, and took away the desserts she had just picked. Zhang Shiyi looked at them, smiled, and said, Well, it seems someone really likes second-hand goods. Then she turned around and left. Kishiu wanted to catch up, but Yu Zinzo stopped her, saying, Let it go. After she and an assistant Chen got into the car, they saw Zhang Shiyi vigorously kicking a tree. Xi'an found her actions quite peculiar and couldn't help but chuckle quietly. Zhang Shiyi continued kicking the tree while cursing, Despicable couple, 
go enjoy the northwest wind. After seeing Yu Zinzo drive away with Kishiu, she turned around and noticed Xian's car. She then remarked, A wealthy little uncle, hi? Want to skip 20 years of hard work, right? Well, I'll finish the interview with Xian first and then take care of him. When I'm done, you won't even be able to enter their house. Chen assistant said to Xian, Both General Manager Zhang and General Manager Tian will attend tomorrow's meeting, and the issue of Li Ying may come up. I suggest having Li Ying submit a solution to address the problem. As for General Tian and General Zhang, regardless of their preferences, the final decision will depend on the assessment results, and it has to be accepted by the majority. Chen responded affirmatively. The driver asked, Shall we go now, Mr. Xi? At that moment, Xi'an noticed Zhang Xi approaching outside the car. She peered inside, adjusted her hair in front of the car window, and then tapped on the window. Excuse me, sir, she said, can I bother you for a moment? Xi'an rolled down the window slightly, and she continued, You see, my phone is out of battery. Could I borrow your power bank? He replied, I don't have a power bank. She persisted, could you let me get in and charge my phone for a bit? He opened the car window further and said, I'm sorry, but my car doesn't carry women with boyfriends, reporter Zhang. She said, actually, I came here to interview you. I thought I could do a quick interview while you're commuting, so it wouldn't interfere with your work schedule. He replied, my commuting time is my private time, and I don't accept interviews during that period. He closed the car window and instructed the driver to proceed. Editor-in-chief Yi spoke on the phone with the managing editor, saying, All right, if Zhang Shiyi can't complete the interview with Xi'an, I'll move Su Yuling's article to the front page. Su Yuling entered and told him, If Zhang Shiyi still hasn't interviewed Xi'an by now, it will be a disaster for the magazine. Yi responded, It's normal for interview subjects to reschedule. As an experienced journalist, you know that. When we compare the value of your article with Xi'an's interview, whoever holds more significance should be on the front page. Shan Shan told Zhang Shiyi, Xi'an does have a niece, and his sister-in-law's surname is indeed Qi. She's the general manager of Minjiao Group. Xi'an's sister-in-law is quite mysterious Some say she's abroad, others claim she's a superstar in the entertainment industry, and there are even rumors that she's no longer alive. However, there has never been any official and precise information. The Xi family is exceptionally good at protecting their privacy. She said, I didn't expect Xi'an to be the uncle of the third girl. Xi'an asked Chen assistant, when is the interview with the financial sector scheduled? Chen replied, your schedule is fully booked for this week, we can only fit it in next week. He then playfully sympathized and said, looks like reporter Zheng has no choice but to open the skylight. Xi'an responded, arrange the earliest possible time for her. Chen said, the soonest would be next Monday. Zhang Xi called Chen assistant and asked if Mr. Xi could spare some time today. Chen replied, Mr. Xi is so busy today that he hasn't even had time for a meal. It seems he'll be working late into the night again. Xi'an and Chen assistant were in the car when Zhang Xi called Chen. She suggested doing the interview on the weekend mentioning that she would be willing to work overtime. Chen apologized and responded, Sorry, reporter Zheng. Zheng Shi saw a message on Yu Zinzo's moments saying he was about to start working at Minjiao. Shan Shan sent her a message on WeChat, saying, You need to pick up the pace. So, she cast aside her low spirits and said, I'll face the challenges head on. The interview needs to be done, and I'll handle the situation. No worries, I... Zhang Shiyi, can definitely do it. Xi'an was in his office reviewing documents when Chen assistant brought in financial reports. Chen advised him to take a good rest this weekend since he had been working overtime every day this week, anticipating that the upcoming meeting wouldn't be easy. Xi'an replied, don't worry. I'll confront them sooner or later. It's better to reveal the truth sooner and see how they react. Chen agreed, saying, true but I'm concerned about your father. They've all been people who once helped you. With your strong stance, won't your father? Xi'an cut him off, saying, my father won't. During the meeting, 
Xi'an asked Director Chu to report on the financial situation for the third quarter. Director Chu stated, in the third quarter, total assets increased by 11%. Director Zhang praised Xi'an, saying, Xi'an, you haven't disappointed us uncles. After you acquire Li Ying, these numbers will look even more impressive. Xi'an responded, Li Ying Group has consistently failed to address core technical issues, lacking independent research and development capabilities. It resembles more of an intermediary. Yun Chuang, though relatively new, investing in such a company carries significant risks. Director Tian commented, securing support from the Guan family and acquiring Li Ying would be a double joy. How could there be any issues? Xi'an said, besides profitability, taking on social responsibility is crucial, and that aligns Yun Chuang and the Guan family's philosophy. After the meeting, Xi'an returned to his office, and assistant Chen brought him some tea. Xi'an asked Chen how the week's work was progressing. Chen reported that everything had been completed. Xi'an inquired if there was anything that could be done ahead of schedule, to which Chen mentioned Zhang reporter from the financial sector. Xi'an agreed, saying it could be done ahead of time. He then informed Chen that he would be going horseback riding at Uncle Guan's equestrian club tomorrow afternoon, so the time before the lunch break and departure could be cleared. Chen acknowledged and said, All right, I'll arrange that. Zhang Shiyi asked Nanan about the situation with Li Ying, and Nanan mentioned that Li Ying's public relations informed her that Yun Chuang was planning to invest in their company. Zhang Shiyi found it strange that Yun Chuang would invest in two companies in the same industry simultaneously. Chen assistant sent her a message saying that Xi'an would be available tomorrow afternoon from 1 to 3 p.m., asking if it was convenient for her to come. She immediately replied, Convenient, see you tomorrow. She excitedly jumped up and high-fived Nanan. Nanan said, Congratulations. You finally got Xi'an. Su so Yuling overheard and began plotting in secret. When Zhang Shiyi left the office after work, and the office was empty, Su so Yuling opened Zhang Shiyi's drawer and secretly took the interview outline she had prepared for Xi'an. Zhang Shiyi opened her wardrobe, holding her phone, and video called Shan Shan. Shan Shan pointed at the clothes in the wardrobe, saying, That black one, the tight fitting dress. When you meet Xi'an tomorrow, Make sure to not only look beautiful and elegant but also sexy and charming. He's a man, and there are no exceptions for men. Zhang Shiyi mentioned that the tight dress would be inconvenient for carrying a laptop. Shan Shan argued, why would carrying a laptop be more important than being sexy? Don't be fooled by what Yu Zinzo said, about a girl's appearance not being important and inner beauty being the most crucial. It's a lie. Shan Shan said, tomorrow. You must make sure Xi'an's eyes and attention are all on you. That way, you might have the chance to discuss life, ideals, and more. Zhang Shiyi exclaimed, Shan Shan, you troublemaker. I'm going for a special interview. Shan Shan replied, Yes, it's a special interview, not just any special interview, but one that's more interesting and full of stories. Xi'an was diligently studying Zhang Shiyi's interview outline. Assistant Chen called him to confirm the interview time for tomorrow, which was from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Zhang Shiyi was reviewing information on the computer. Xi'an was running on a treadmill.